YouTube, and it's time for your weekly quick tip. Sorry Bree's not here to do any of the film editing or the uh, filming, because she's had a really busy weekend, and she was actually getting pretty tired, so she didn't have time to do uh, any of the editing or filming or anything, so I'm going to have to do this one on my own. So hopefully you guys don't mind, and we'll get into it. Today we're going to be explaining how when you go to do things indoors, start things indoors, a lot of times you'll find it overwhelming. Um, we almost found it overwhelming for a second until we got this down pat where you need to realize what's going to go outdoors first, second, third, fourth, and so on and so forth. And that way when you go to put your plants in the grow box or underneath complex, compact fluorescent lights, you don't have to worry about uh, crowding and having too much or not enough light to suffice for all of the plants. And that's one of the things a lot of people panic about. But when you realize it, don't panic. I'm going to explain to you in a little bit how this is going to work with some close-ups and stuff. But basically, you have your spring plants, and then you have your summer plants, and then you have your fall plants. Now, when you're planting indoors, you always want to start with your spring plants. Because your spring plants are going to go out there first, and then you can start just a couple weeks before you put your spring plants outdoors, you put your summer plants in the ground, so by the time they're sprouting, you can put them underneath the light, because they don't even require light to grow. You can put them underneath your bed, you can put them underneath the dark cloth, they actually like the dark, the dark helps them sprout. Once they sprout, you can put them underneath the grow, or the, uh, the grow lights or compact fluorescent lights. And that is going to help you out a lot once you realize that there's a little kind of assembly line going on. Because once you get, for instance, we're growing lettuce, onions, garlic, and broccoli and cauliflower, and uh, some spinach. Those are all very early spring vegetables. Those are very frost tolerant, very cold tolerant and also kale. We're growing kale also. And they they don't mind the cold. Whereas if you put a zucchini outdoors, it would not be able to produce fruit, flowers, grow. It would do, it would do nothing. It would be absolutely pointless. So we start with the kale and the rest of the plants. And then once they're old enough, in about two weeks, we're going to start planting our summer vegetables. Because in about four weeks, we're going to begin planting outdoors with our spring vegetables. And I'll show you now what I'm talking about. Okay, so in the grow box, obviously you guys have seen before, if you guys have seen all of our videos, we have the peppers. But behind the peppers is the broccoli and the cauliflower. And the peppers were starting because they require a lot of space. All the onions. The onions, and the garlic, and the lettuce. The tomatoes take up a lot of space. By the time they're going to need to be transplanted, as well as the peppers, the all of the plants that I just show that I just showed here are going to be gone. So now, what you need to know is you're going to be a little crowded for a little bit, but in three weeks it won't be crowded at all and then you'll have room for all the peppers to be replanted again and that's why they're all nestled in there really close and it's uh, about as tight as two peas in a pod because uh, you know we're doing that so we can maximize the amount of usage we have in our grow box which is what a lot of people need to learn how to do and over here today we just started our kale and our lettuce and our spinach and our basil, all our herbs, um, and back there is all spinach as well. All back there. Got plenty of spinach. And in here we have our tomatoes, which obviously don't need space because they're growing on their own. And behind there is all of the other vegetables that will be put into the grow box once they sprout. And they're going to be put into bigger pots and that whole process can be started over again without need of worrying about space issues 
or light issues. As you can see here, this could easily be overwhelming. We have we have well over 400 plants, well over 400 plants, and we could easily start doing some more. I just choose not to because we um, we're running out of seeds to put in pots and in the grow box right now, and um, and the rest of the seeds we have need to be directly sown outdoors. So that is your weekly quick tip. Remember that if you have any questions, don't feel free to just email me. Feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like. And just, you know, stay tuned and uh, get ready for some more gardening. Thanks. Bye.